in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. To prepare ourselves now to celebrate these sacred mysteries of God's love and God's grace, let us call to mind our sins and open our hearts to the Lord's forgiveness and mercy. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against Thee and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve Thee in newness of life, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
gloria in excelsis Deo.
Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to receive the prayers of thy people which call upon thee, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil the same. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book Jonah. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and relenting from punishment. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head, to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush, for which you did not labour and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals? This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labour for me, yet I cannot say which I will choose. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that by my presence again with you, your boast might abound in Christ Jesus because of me. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and in no way frightened by those opposing you. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle <coughs> that you swore I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for their usual daily wage, he went then, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So there he went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out 
and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Christ. please be seated. Just a brief notice, um, you'll have noticed in our weekly email and on the news sheet in front of you that there'll be a parish lunch next Sunday at Pizza Express on Dean Street. Um, if you could let me know this week if you're intending to come, that would be useful. And probably, whilst we don't have a parish administrator at the minute, um, just email me directly and I can uh, work out how many places we need to book for that. So that's a parish lunch uh, at Pizza Express in Dean Street next week after the Mass. Be in touch with me about that. Some words from this morning's Gospel. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The parable we just heard in our Gospel is one of the most revealing stories ever told about envy. Very often Jesus' parables show us in a simple and uncomplicated way how we should live, behaviour that we should copy, if you like. But this one doesn't quite work like that. I don't think anyone would urge us to replicate this system of paying wages in any modern place of work. It would be deeply unjust. So something more is going on here 
deep within the metaphor of a vineyard owner paying his workers. Another layer of meaning that somehow we need to tease out. At the heart of the problem presented to us in this story is the way in which the workers think they can deal with the owner of the vineyard solely through the lens of justice and merit. They want their relationship with him to be governed by what they've earned, what they can justly demand, and how much they have produced. Now, as a way of organising a workplace, you might argue that's perfectly acceptable. But as a way of dealing with God, that swiftly, pretty swiftly, falls apart. For once we realise that the vineyard owner is in fact God, the parable shows us that we can't barter with him on the basis of what we've earned. We can't buy salvation by our own efforts. And we can't control how God chooses to be generous. The frustration of the workers who toiled longer than others reveals itself in that most squalid and destructive and most frequent of emotions, envy. Not only does that envy poison their relationship with the vineyard owner, but it also poisons their relationship with each other. Envy eats up mutual respect. It sours friendship. It plants suspicion. It kills gratitude and it wrecks our capacity to love. So what can we do to keep envy in check and approach God in a spirit of gratitude rather than entitlement? Well, a woman called Susie Dent has just published a wonderful children's book that I recommend to you called Roots of Happiness, 100 Words for Joy and Hope. She's a lexicographer who realised that our language is way too full of negative words for depressing things. She's trawled through the history of the English language in her book to find new and interesting words that children can use to describe positive thoughts and emotions and experiences. And it's in this book that she reminds us there is a word in English for taking joy in someone else's happiness and good fortune. And that word is confelicity. Confelicity means to rejoice in someone else's happiness. Confelicity is to be happy with them and for them. It is to delight in the fact that they have been blessed and to experience that delight solely for their good. I suppose you could describe confelicity as the virtuous opposite of one of my favourite emotions, schadenfreude. Psychologists argue that the capacity to describe an emotion for children helps them to experience and harness it. So if a child only has and hears negative words, for bad feelings, they are the ones that the child is most likely to experience. But to cultivate the capacity to speak positively about yourself and others helps you to feel gracious and loving and generous. 
So perhaps our response to this parable that we've heard today might be to embrace the idea of confelicity, to be happy that someone else is happy, to rejoice in the blessings that God has bestowed on others. For confelicity takes from us the envy that turns us in on ourselves. It draws us out of our introspection to see God's hand in others. And it helps us to delight in his gift to them. It is, if you like, quite simply a sign of the presence of love. For love seeks nothing for itself and gives of itself for the other. So whenever we're tempted to envy others who have received more than us, when we're jealous at someone who's better at something we wish we could do, when someone at church or at work or in our family gets a role we think we were entitled to, or recognition that we think we deserve, check that envy by rejoicing in the good fortune of the person you're jealous of. And if we do that, I think we start to get a more accurate picture of how our own salvation works at God's hands. For we will not be given eternal life with him because we deserve it or have earned it. Rather, to be called into fellowship with the living God is to come to him aware of our own sins and failings. It is to have been forgiven in the waters of baptism. And it is to know that our very life itself is a gift from God, the source of all life and love and generosity. It is quite simply to be grateful. Grateful for what God has done for us and to trust not in the value of anything we do ourselves, but in the power of his gift of himself to us. Amen. I believe in one God. <laughs>
Let us call on the Lord who is near to us in our every need. Let us pray for the worldwide church, particularly today for those who teach the Christian faith, that they may be faithful in their service of God's people and instruct them with compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the leaders of the world's governments, that they may reflect the Lord's righteousness in their work for victims of injustice. We pray for those places in the world suffering violence and disaster, particularly today for the Sudan, for the Ukraine, for Manipur, and for Libya and Morocco. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, particularly those known to each of us at this moment in our own lives, praying that they might know the Lord's embrace through our words and our deeds of compassion. Among the sick, we pray for Father Harry Hodgetts, Amanda Barrett, Martin Burker, James Roger, Elizabeth Lyon, Ray Oram, Felicity Felton, Gareth Vaughan, Eddie Burns, Stephen Pedley, Philip Eschbach, Lena Sheridan, Mary Rowe, and Francis O'Neill. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for ourselves, mindful of our growth in holiness as individuals and as a Christian family, that we might not strive to be first, but to put others before ourselves. We pray for all who come to worship here, in person and online. Among the friends of all saints, we pray for John Rick, Hilary Roger, Father Jim Rosenthal, Mossman Roosh, Greg Round, and Mary Sherrod. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have died, that they may know the eternal banquet of heaven. We pray for the recently departed, including Herbert Bruff, Jenny Field, Peter Simpson, Gareth Chester-Jones, and Sheena Ann Burrell. And for those who have worshipped here before us and are now at rest, and whose anniversary of death falls today, including Eric King, Irene Bevan. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let our eyes shine on. Let us ask for a share of the prayers of heaven, not least of heaven's queen, Our Lady of Walsingham, whom we greet together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, 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 Mary,
Pray that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands, the grace and glory of His name, Grant, O Lord, we pray that by the protection of thy holy sacraments we may ever be defended against all the assaults of the devil through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy your hearts. We the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is It is very meet, right, and abundant and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. For he is thy living world, to him thou hast created all things from the beginning, and fashioned us in thy own image. To him thou didst redeem us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman, to die upon the cross and to rise again for us. Through him thou hast made us for thine own possession, exalting him to thy right hand on high, and sending forth through him thy holy and life-giving Spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying,
Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be unto us his body and his blood. who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of of me. <clears throat> Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is alive. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of thy divine majesty, together with Jonathan, our bishop, and Sarah, bishop of London, renew us by thy Holy Spirit, inspire us with thy love, and unite us in the body of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in thy unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, our Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day.
Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Almighty God, who hast taught us through thy Son that love is the fulfilling of the law, grant that we may love thee with our whole heart and our neighbour as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with my spirit. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ and see you
grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. We beseech thee, O Lord, to pour forth thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 